So, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then just to wrap this up, I know that we've been going at this for a while. I'm curious if you had, uh, anything that stood out to you as like, you know, super surprising, good or bad in terms of performances or just really, really impressive performances, um, you know, that really stand out to you. Cause I have a couple thoughts in terms of like who ended up in the top 10 on both the men's and the women's side, which I really love. And I'm curious about, you know, what your thoughts are as, as things that are sort of like stand out very, very either like exceptionally good or bad, or just really impressive. Well, one Medeiros is whole thing like he was super super impressive uh the entire weekend like that was very very surprising for me i didn't think he'd put on a clinic like he did uh two uh you know i felt like laura horvath uh with her performance this weekend she was lights out right like in a universe where tia Tumi doesn't exist she is the most dominant crossfitter in the world right now right like she is she was fantastic uh, this weekend and people can say like oh but you know her her handstand push-ups suck and it's like yeah okay but if you take a look at the leaderboard how many points was she in the lead of uh of all the women right yeah she was she was like 80 points ahead of third place so yeah she's well well ahead of third place yeah so she easily you know if she takes a, a bad event you know in that and gets you know lo- lower than half uh, she still wins the CrossFit games if, if T is not there, right? So uh, to me, I, I just, Laura was very, very not surprising because we know that she has the capacity to do well. It's just that the past couple of years in the formats that were given, she didn't succeed in that, right? And you see that we go back to a full weekend structure and Laura Horvath is back in the top top two right Vellner and Fikowski back at the top right was it was uh the pat were the past two years indicative of Vellner Fikowski and Horvath not being fit in the past two years or was it more so the structure of the games didn't really suit their strengths and weaknesses right so it's just interesting to think about that where all these characters are back now, now that, you know, we have a more structured uh, classic game structure. So did you see, I think Kalor Horvath is now doing uh, like Ben Smith is now coaching her. That's a really interesting combo. Uh, I would be really curious to see, you know, I think there's like this interesting, like meta race between the former champions to see who can coach the next champion. Like which one of the former champions is going to be the first one to actively develop and coach another champion. Um, you know, I think some people might say that, that Madero's got like the, the nod and the blessing from hard work pays off himself, but I don't, I don't think you can, you can credit Matt Fraser for what, uh, Adam and, and Justin were able to do considering that Adam has basically developed Justin from like a teenager to a CrossFit games champion, which is incredibly impressive. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's cur- I'm I'm very curious to see like who's going to be the first of the former champions to coach up another champion. Like that's going to be a really interesting uh, a, a really interesting race. But for me, taking a look at you know the top ten, uh, a couple things that stand out. Uh, Kristen Holta has retired, and she's had an incredible career. Um, you know, her, the fact that she was still fighting for that third place finish all the way to the very last event was super cool. I love seeing uh, a couple things here in this top 10, you know, Haley Adams with like a quote unquote disappointing fifth place finish is it just speaks to how good she is and how good everyone knows she is that if she doesn't make it to the podium, everyone's like, Oh man, must've been a real bummer year for you, Haley. It's like, yeah, she's 21 or she's 20 and she's, uh, she's, you know, bummed about not making it onto the podium. Like that's huge. You know, she's going to put on some size. She's going to be a little bit stronger and she's going to keep fighting for that podium spot. And, you know, if there's anybody who's like the next one up to potentially win the CrossFit games, you have to have her name on the list, but right behind her, I love seeing Gabby Magala in the top 10. You know, she's, she's been flying under the radar because of how the coverage over the past couple of years has worked. Like she competed individually at the games in 2019 as a a national champion 
but she's been flying under the radar because no one gives any coverage to someone who doesn't do exceptionally well. And here she is sixth place. Like she's going to get a lot of attention and she absolutely deserves it. Same with Mal O'Brien, 17 years old coming in and beating Tia Clear to me head to head in a wall walk thruster workout. That is one of the most savage things I've ever seen. That was super cool. Um, and I also want to point out by the way, that Chrissy Romo O'Connell, a last chance qualifier, uh, out of that online last chance qualifier who even had to put up like kind of an unbelievable day two on the online last chance qualifier to make it to the CrossFit games ended up in eighth. So there's something to be said about allowing and opening up the doors to every single opportunity for someone to prove themselves worthy of being at the CrossFit games, because you never know what they're going to be able to do. Um, and a little bit more to that, although she's in 14th place, Ariel Lowen is a perfect example of that. You know, she was a backfill into quarterfinals and then she won Granite Games and then she was 14th at the CrossFit Games. So, you know, that that tells you a lot about just casting the widest net possible and allowing the athletes to prove themselves into getting to the CrossFit Games. On the men's side, um, man, Guy Mujeros, this kid. Uh, the two in the top 10 that really stick out to me the most are Guy, who I'm very curious to see what ends up happening with him as he gets a little bit older and he, he kind of brings up some of his, his weaknesses and Lazar Dukic. I cannot describe to you how much I love watching Lazar Dukic compete against these like Adonis jacked out of their minds dudes when Lazar literally looks like he could be like my cousin, like from down the street here in like little Armenia. Like I love watching this guy compete because he looks like such a normal dude. And up until now, he's been known as like the, up until now he's been known as like the crazy open performance guy. You know, when there's a workout that you look at and you're like, man, this is impossible to do. He's going to do it in faster than anybody else. And we've seen that happen twice uh, with two of the finale workouts in the open you know, he's been exceptionally good at, at just beating everyone else in the world at that with nearly impossible scores and seeing him show up to the CrossFit games and take ninth overall winning a couple of events. I mean, that's about as cool as it gets, you know, like that's about as cool as it gets. And I, I even messaged him and told him like how pumped I was just to see him throw down with the big dogs because he did some really impressive things. 